My name is Laura Lee, and this is It's Not About Food. So it's not about food, and it's not about weight. What is it about? Everything else. Because it's never ever about food or weight. Never ever, not even, one time, not ever, ever, ever. Hello, everyone. This is Laura Lee Rourke with the It's Not About Food podcast. And today we're talking about the Body Talk card. On the front of the card is the goddess giving herself a hug and putting her hand on her heart. And then she's thinking of a heart. So thinking of love, if you will. And uh, so different than how I used to talk to my body. But it's a very beautiful card, a very beautiful ideal. And the back of the card says, body talk is how we communicate with our bodies. Communications with our bodies are often full of negative, critical comments, which are not only unproductive, but make us feel worse and lead to destructive behaviors. When we are aware of how we talk to ourselves, we can learn to stop the mean body talk or at least slow it down and create room for more positive, loving, nurturing, and inspirational communication with our bodies. So for me, this was such a revelation that in order to love the body that I had, I had to stop being so mean to myself and my body. It was very hard to move into body acceptance and intuitive eating and taking care of my feelings without having that, that I'm not going to speak to myself as if I am my worst enemy. That was like a huge shift. When I really heard myself, what I told myself, it was phenomenal. And it was so devastating. I was really sad for me (laughs) that I spoke to that way about me and my body So that was a huge healing for me, part of the recovery. So I tell my clients, and I told myself, and even sometimes when the whole aging thing gets uh, very uncomfortable for me, I have to remember to tell myself that I'm okay. I love me no matter what. I love the body that I have. I'm going to be okay. I don't need to like do anything other than just love what is. And that sounds really impossible, I know, for a lot of us. And it would have sounded that way to me. But I'm really glad that the person that we're going to interview today picked this card because it is such an important idea of looking at how we speak to ourselves and looking how we speak to our bodies is really one of the biggest parts of the recovery of the three-prong model. So she was in our peer education program, and she was so good and just jumped right in, I remember, and just owned the whole thing with her whole heart and soul. It was a beautiful thing to see. Were you in high school when you were doing this? I was actually at community college, but I did it for quite an amount of time. I just wanted to acknowledge that, you know, I'm so grateful for that experience it was my first experience in the field of psychology, you know, nearly a decade ago. And I still draw so much from that work and what I've learned working with you to this day with all sorts of different work that I'm using. It was my first introduction to mindfulness-based therapy. Yeah. It couldn't tell that it was your first kind of toe in the water of this subject of how we can help ourselves grow and change. Because you, again, you just like took it on, like, boom, this is who I am. This is my truth. And I'm owning it. It was beautiful to see. So I'm going to turn it over to her. She can introduce herself and tell us what she's been up to these past 10 years since I've seen her. (laughs) (laughs) Can you believe it? (laughs) I can't. I know. My name is Christine Isotalo, and I'm currently a PhD student in clinical psychology And my main focuses are on disordered eating and autism spectrum disorder. So 
I really have those two focuses as kind of a tie in my eyes, but I've been really surprised to see how much overlap there is and how much that I can really take what I've learned with one to the other um, Yes, and you know, everything in between. Yes, it's so great. And you wouldn't think they would go together, but they do. So tell me what a little bit of the work that you're doing that you have to have that you gravitated towards this body talk card. Yeah, so in looking at this body talk card, I realized that this is really the kind of work that I've been doing in myself and with others. So really a lot of you know what I wanna talk to about today is how we can encourage ourselves to talk positively. Where does that come from? Why aren't we already doing that? And how we can talk to other people about that to, you know, encourage more people to get on board with this. I was talking to somebody before about this of like when we're little, when we're babies, we are pretty cool with ourselves. We just think we're all really great. And so is everybody else. And our bodies are wonderful because we've got these hands and feet and we're all good. And then what happens that we start to turn kind of really happy with us in the world and then we start to turn on ourselves. So what makes that happen? What do you think? I think a lot of it is these messages that we're also receiving. And unfortunately, that can really come from our loved ones who are close to us when we are young children still. And, you know, I remember speaking with you about this too, is if we hear our mothers who we are the image of criticizing their own bodies, how are we supposed to learn to love our own bodies? I think those comments are really encouraging that unhealthy behavior. And I think a lot of the messages society or an advertisement as well send the message that if you only looked this certain way then you would have it all you would have a perfect relationship you would love yourself immediately and it's really not realistic it's really a cognitive distortion that so many of us buy into because we don't hear another point of view to sort of filter out that information Right. And then we get into a place at some point where even if somebody does say, you are fine the way that you are, we go, no, you're stupid. (laughs) You're an idiot to say that because I'm being told on a much deeper level and I was told on a much deeper level that I was not okay. So whatever positive bullshit you have going on, I'm going to discount it because it's not true. And then we end up in that downward spiral of it continuing. Something I've been thinking a a lot about, well, you mentioned aging a couple minutes ago. And to me, bodies are so incredible. And I see them as sort of a resume of our lives. Yeah. You know, we've wrinkles from joy and from the times that we've had to persevere in our lives. But our bodies are standing by us through it all. I think about how we somaticize our thoughts and feelings by holding these psychological conflicts and converting them into physical symptoms. So, and we, we usually think about that, you know, for those who are less familiar with this, you know, maybe we might have a backache from stress or a pit in our stomach from feeling anxious. I kind of see that as our body trying to help us turn our problem, our psychological problem as something physical, because if we don't have the tools to cope emotionally, maybe we can solve that more physically. That's right. And so in that case, you know, what are we doing to our bodies when we talk to them or about them? Are we negatively and taking a physical toll on it even further? I kind of see the self-criticism as a form of self-harm in a way. Or are we feeding it and nurturing it and trying to get back on the upward spiral instead? Yeah, it's sort of like if I call myself names over and over and over again, then I know what that feels like. 
but I don't know what it feels like to be lonely or scared or vulnerable or afraid or anger, but I do know what it feels like to be fat or stupid or ugly or gross. I know how to use those words against me. And something I remember you telling me about just kind of commenting on other people's bodies can really encourage that unhealthy behavior. So commenting on someone's weight loss, for example, can reinforce that and make them want to keep losing it. And then they'll get that dopamine. Yeah. (laughs) It might feel like they're going on that upward spiral that I'm referring to, but it's really that external and then it's going to lead to a downslide. It starts so innocently and, you know, maybe you weren't even trying to lose weight and then it becomes an obsession before you know it reinforcing the idea that your body's only worth that compliment or worth that praise if it appears to have become smaller or whatever the body trend du jour is at that time. Yeah. It reminds me of somebody that we had in our group many, many years ago, a young girl who in one summer, she got really sick. She got mono. And because of that, she lost a lot of weight and she was young. And when she went to school, In September, or here, the end of August, she got so much praise about that, that she started her eating disorder right then and there. And it came from an illness that she had that she lost a bunch of weight for, but she wasn't happy with that until she got so much praise. So she had to go back and kind of unlock that whole piece about her own little life of like, wait, I needed to gain my weight back because I was so sick. And then when I got well, I needed to actually get better. But instead, I got worse because of what people told me of how great I looked. And it was all about how she looked, not how she felt. Like, yay, you lived through this horrible illness and yay, now you can get better. was like, yay, no, now you can get worse. (laughs) It was hard on her little self to go through that. Right. Coming off of being sick and then having that just jump right into that. That's such a common story too. I've, I've heard that from so many people that something like that will happen or they'll lose weight because they got depressed and then want to keep that up. That's another really you know common thing that happens. Yeah. Instead of like talking to the body and saying, what does my body need? Oh, my body actually needs to put weight on, or oh, my body needs to move, or oh, my body needs to rest. Like right now in this COVID, we're all stuck in our houses, and we're supposed to be doing this major makeover. We're supposed to be doing this really high-intensity workouts every day and juice only, and you know, there's all this pressure to not gain the COVID-19, whatever the hell that is, but also to be better, you know, to be thinner and stronger and faster and younger. And it's just so weird what's happening as a result of this. To get all your work done, make sure that you're (laughs) now ahead of the game in school for me, at least. (laughs) Exactly. What, you didn't remodel your bathroom while you had all this time? What were you doing? You know, it's like, I was just trying not to get sick, basically. (laughs) (laughs) It's so true, though. And it comes out. And what you're saying, it's so interesting because something else that's happened in individual sessions, I've noticed is I'll have a client who's talking about whatever it is that we're discussing. It could be relational dissatisfaction or what have you. And they'll, what seems pretty abruptly, say that, you know, I I really should have gone to the gym. Yeah. Or something along those lines. Yeah. And you try to follow this train of thought of, okay, where did that come from? And you realize it goes back to that, I need to, or those I shoulds, I should be doing this. I should have done that instead of just listening to your own intuition, like you're saying. I have somebody that I'm working with right now who is upset with herself that she didn't start this major remake of herself and she's wasted all this time. And I keep telling her, look at what you have been doing. This doesn't count in society as much, but what does 
count in society is how good you look, not what the good you did. <laughs> so uh, it's very mind-blowing. And again, going back to the body talk of uh, what are we telling ourselves, what are we telling our bodies that it's not acting right if it's just not being sick, or if it's getting sick, that it's getting well about getting sick. So it's such a different level that we're working on. One thing I remember you saying that was so great, you said it in a classroom full of eighth or ninth graders, and you said, you know, my family is from Iceland. (laughs) Finland. Finland. Very close, though. (laughs) Finland. And we're supposed to be kind of a bigger people because it's cold there. It was such a beautiful thing that you said, and you could tell people were looking at you like, well, huh. Where am I from, I wonder? And that's what you were saying. Our bodies, they're genetically coded to be in where they were. And then even if we move, there's still a a thing about that. We have to realize that. that There's a lot of stuff that we're DNA'd to do. And we have to sort of give that to ourselves. It's not like you look like a Viking or something. It's just you look like a regular person, but you found this out by yourself and for yourself, which was a beautiful thing. You're not little, tiny, and small that comes from a little, small, little, tiny country. You came from this other country, and this is how they look. This is how your ancestors looked. Yes, they were actually reindeer herders. So (laughs) (laughs) I think that something that's really taken a new perspective for me is realizing, oh, kind of more working on my strength. I realized, you know, I wasn't as strong as I think that I can be built a little bit to be more strong. So that's, that's felt pretty good and powerful for me lately, but exactly. Yeah, it's so true. Everybody is not meant to be the same. Everybody is from different places of the world where it's completely different and they've been there for forever. Yeah. It's like your skin is this color because you're this close to the equator and your skin is this color because you're in snow country all the time and you're this, you know, whatever, or you're this build. And trying to change that is like trying to change the color of your eyes. Well, I don't want to have green eyes. I want to have brown eyes. Well, you're not the brown eyed person. You don't have those genes. (laughs) I think, you know, really learning to accept just everything about yourself. Everybody has different talents. Everybody has different energy to them. And that's what makes life fun. It's not everybody being the same. It's getting to know everybody for who they are internally. And when we're spending so much time just focusing on how we look, we're missing all of these chances to make space to develop our compassion our ability to give and receive love, our personality. We're not making that space in our own lives. That would most likely be more fulfilling. (laughs) Exactly. Another thing I remember about you that was so great is I think you have a younger sister. I do. Yeah, and you would talk about her. I knew you had at least one. I was kind of questioning whether you had two or whatever. But anyway, that you would talk to her about what you were learning in the peer education group of being an educator about this issue and how you would talk to her about that. You come back and say, well, I told my little sister this, or I reminded my little sister about this. And, and so how is that little sister? How did she kind of take that in and where is she now with that? She's 19 now, and by the time this comes out, it'll be just a little bit before her birthday. So happy early birthday, Chrissy. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, you know, I, I think that it's still a journey, and I try to model what I wish would have been modeled for me, for others. And something that's really just keeps coming up with me with this card is the practicing one I preach. And yeah. so I think it it's on this card where it mentions, even if you're not saying something positive to yourself, at least say something neutral to yourself. Yeah. Or to me, 
maybe even nothing. Right. So I did sort of an experiment and I did begin this at that time and um, probably done this with my little sister as well. But I decided to just not make any comments about anybody else's body or my own. And it quickly became apparent how frequently people close to me ask me how they look. And so it would open up this conversation for me to have and let them know, you know, hey, I've I've decided I'm I'm not gonna be commenting on people's bodies. I realize this is more extreme. No, and, um, it's good. I think it stands out to a lot of people when they're I'm not giving them what they want when asking me, can you tell I lost weight? But I was doing it about myself too. And it just was so freeing and takes so much pressure on that, off of that worry and allows you to see the whole person and have deeper conversations and do this. And it's not the easy route, but I think it's a very worthwhile route. And my hope is that I can at least encourage people like my little sister and model that to at least just kind of, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. (laughs) Think of other things. What else can we talk about with our friends? So much. So true. Yeah. I love that you said that because I remember myself in my own recovery thinking, I'm not going to have any comments on anybody else's body. I mean, I may I may think them because I'm not going to get rid of all my thoughts, but I can at least not say them and not put that out there about myself or them. And it was phenomenal how hard that was. Or to do a description about somebody like, you know, that woman and she's thin and she's blonde and beautiful. Like, what if I didn't use any of that? What would I say? Well, you know, that woman that has that really good smile. <laughs> How do we describe people if we don't have these lookisms, if you will? It's very hard. It really is. But it helps you to live in a way that's really more aligning with your values and you know, feeding your mind and soul the best. And I know I mentioned earlier about mindfulness, but I really think that what we need to be doing is doing this in a way that's mindful. If we live mindfully and you noticed you had those thoughts come into your mind, it's okay. They're going to come. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's going to stop having these thoughts forever, but being aware of it and then acting and thinking with intentionality to break those negative cycles is really, I think, the first step. And it's probably the hardest step, but... Yeah, it's questioning our own selves that we get all narcissistic about, like, well, this must be true because I thought it. And to have the idea that, oh, it's just a thought. And I don't know if it's true or false, but it's just a thought and... I'm just going to let it go for right now because it's not really serving me in any way to have that thought. So on that same thread about this younger sister that you would go home and talk about this with her and be commenting on her body or what she looked like or anything, what if when you were a little girl, someone had done that for you? What would that be if so like you had yourself as you were learning all this stuff? come into your bedroom when you were a little girl and say these things? And what would that have been like? I think just commenting on, I'm somebody who I love getting dressed up, don't get me wrong. And I view how I look as also an expression of myself. Today, I know you can't see it on the podcast, but I'm wearing a pineapple button shirt and I'm I'm really (laughs) enjoying this. (laughs) But... There's so much more beyond that. Mm -hmm. I love to do art. I love to talk to people. I love psychology. I love animals. You know, there's just so much else behind that. And it seems so unimportant to me. It is something that comes up, you know, and it'll come up back in the dating world. People will say things to you and it happens to my friends as well. They will directly say something negative and I just really feel that it's my duty to 
have these conversations with people and it's scary and you might not be at that place on your journey to be able to have those conversations but i think i think if that had been said to me when i was younger and i hit puberty before everybody else yeah <laughs> it would have been helpful <laughs> it would have been helpful for sure and i mean i don't know what i would have done we often say about the peer ed program that what if all of us who uh, suffer from eating disorders or have had them or body hatred or just generally the people in America, <laughs> you know, if you had this knowledge when you were a teenager, what would your life have turned out? And that's why we go into the schools and talk about it because we're trying to show that there is a different way. You don't have to go here. If you do, there is recovery, but you, there's also prevention and mm -hmm. This is a nowhereville area to go. It seems that some sort of parenting class or book or something, it would be really great to say that to parents. You know, even if you're going to say that about yourself, try to not say it in front of your child. Right. It's not easy, but it's just so important. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that enough. <laughs> You know, over the years, we've had so many people come in to Beyond Hunger who say exactly what you're saying. I didn't have this support as a child, but I want to heal this part about myself so I don't give it to my daughter or my son. And yeah, and first, we have to fill the well up ourselves. First, we have to put the oxygen mask on ourselves, and then we can help others. But yeah, I love the old Bambi who was that thumper that said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That is really a great thing to come away with for sure. It is just making these small changes on our own and then sharing that with the people that are close to you. Yeah. You really be the only time that they've been introduced to thinking about any of this and thinking differently and thinking for themselves. And that's how these things spread, really. Yes, exactly right. So is there anything else that we didn't touch upon that you feel like you really want to make sure that we say? Yeah, I, I just think what keeps coming up for me with this Body Talk card is taking the lead and taking that lead with talking to your own body taking that initiative to make those changes in your own heart and modeling that for others. And I'm a really big believer, not in just this, but in general, really being that light in the world. And I think just striving to brighten your own light is really the way to go. And these, these cards are fantastic and helping us to start with that journey, no matter where you are. Right. And there's that Marianne, Williamson quote about, it doesn't help the world if you hide your light. It doesn't do anything for anybody. What does do something is to just let yourself shine as bright as you want to be. That it doesn't, for me, you know, I always thought I shouldn't be so big or so out there because it makes people uncomfortable. But that was an old, old tape that I had for a really long time, and it just really didn't work to tell you the truth. It just never did work. Right. Yeah. And working on that reparenting that I know you've discussed before on your podcast. But yeah. again, you can be the person that takes that lead and makes that change for yourself. Yes. And that helps. The ripple effect is then they have enough courage to do that for others as well. Yeah. You really make it okay yeah. for them to be able to show their own light. That's right. There's more than enough for everybody. So I wonder if you will read on the bottom of the card the for today. Today, I will practice being aware of my negative thoughts and comments about my body. I will practice stopping them and replacing them with neutral or positive statements. I will practice speaking to my body in nurturing, comforting, and kind ways with compassion and acceptance. Oh. I love that. We speak so 
meanly to our body and each other, especially right now, there seems to be such pain and suffering and fear and anger in our country right now. And just to say, I'm just going to speak in nurturing, comforting, and kind ways with compassion and acceptance. What, uh, what a difference that would make if we were able to do that and still fight this pandemic. But if we had that kind of acceptance and love and compassion as we all go through this, wouldn't that be like a mind blower? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And even if it doesn't just come naturally on its own, setting aside a minute to be really intentional about nurturing your body, whether it's with food or with this body talk, just taking a small amount of time and doing that. They start start you off and kind of light that fire. Yeah. And just sort of letting yourself rest in the comfort of your own self. What a nice thing that would be. I really so much appreciate connecting with you again and seeing you and uh, having you on the podcast. I'm just so grateful to you for doing this. Me too. I am very grateful that I had this opportunity to be on this wonderful podcast of yours. And I just wanted to make sure to thank you for being one of the most important mentors that I've had. I've been really blessed to have you start my journey with me in in the world of psychology. It's truly my foundation. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that you're in this field. We need more of you, for sure. Us old dinosaurs, we're all dying off (laughs) pretty soon. (laughs) We need this youth, you know, coming in and saying what these truths and even adding more of their own, for sure. So great. I'm glad you're here and doing this. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And be sure and follow me on Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and it's notaboutfood.com. Thanks.